Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 4 on making a multiplayer FPS in Unity. In this video, our primary focus is going to be syncing our movement and rotation over the network. So, things will start to look like an actual multiplayer FPS. Also, we are going to update the looks of our scene a bit and just clean up the project. So, let's get started. But before we do, I quickly want to mention that if you have any questions, you can go to forum.brackies.com. If your code isn't working, you can download it off GitHub. Links are in the description. And if you want to support my videos, you can go to brackies.com slash donate. So now that that's out of the way, enjoy. So let's start by adding a bit more contrast to our scene. So if we go into our scene view here and select the ground plane, I think we should add a new material to this. So let's right click, go create material and let's call this ground. Then we can drag it onto our ground plane. We can go under the albedo slot and change the texture here. And you can see that there are a bunch of textures imported uh, with the standard assets pack. Uh, one of those is the swatch orange and I'm just going to be using that. And also we might want to bump down the smoothness a bit. Actually I'm going to change this from standard to standard specular setup and then bump that down to 0.3. And uh, maybe I want this to be a bit less orange. Uh, so in order to do that we can simply find a color pretty much opposite of orange here, so a light blue, and tint it a bit in that direction, just so it won't be too much. And then finally I want to add the same grid that we see on the cubes here, so if you select those, those are also from the standard assets, so you have this navy grid texture, and then they use an emission map uh, that has this grid look. Uh, so we can do the same, so if we simply select our ground plane, go underground, and then we can find our emission slot and find the grid emission texture again under prototyping and the textures. And then we can maybe bump this up to two to make it a bit more uh, clear to see at least from a distance. Also, when we have the grid on the ground plane here, I want to go under gizmos and make sure to disable show grid. You can see I've done that already. I think that looks the best. Awesome, so I think that really added some a nice feel to our scene and uh, I think you will uh, find it to look pretty cool um, with the skybox also. So uh, now that we have that in place, we can maybe just quickly create uh, a couple of folders here. So let's create one for scripts where we can place our controller, our motor and our player setup and one for materials. where we can place our ground and our gun. Cool, so let's hit save on that. And now we are ready to do a movement synchronization over the network for our player objects. So if we select the player here, Unity has provided us with an awesome component called the network transform component. And this takes care of pretty much all pretty much everything for us. <laughs> so syncing um, position and rotation over the network isn't necessarily a very difficult task uh, on top of the uh, HL API. And uh, we could definitely go ahead and create a script that would work just fine uh, right now. But the default Unity component has some nice features that I think will uh, you will like. So Let's, let me just talk a bit about how this uh, syncing actually work. Well, you can see the first uh, slider we have here is the network send rate. And this is the amount of times in second that we will send a package containing information about our position and rotation to other clients. So this is kind of the update rate. And um, well, in an ideal world, uh, this would be uh, 60 at least. So every time our uh, computer rendered a frame, we would also send the information and then it would be ready next time the other clients would want to render a frame. So this way we would get very accurate uh, movement and we would get a very smooth movement also. But in reality, that's not really 
possible. Because if we sh- were to bump this send rate up to uh, up very far uh, b- beyond uh, what this allows us to, well, then we would very quickly clutter up the network and uh, that would maybe cause it to completely stop or to uh, block uh, the connection or whatever. So that would give us a lot of issues. Instead, what we do is we send at a limited rate. You can see the default here is 9 and we're just going to leave it at 9. And then what we do is we take this very jerky motion where the uh, player just jumps from one position to the next. And then we smooth it out by lerping between the positions or doing what is called movement interpolation. And this is super awesome because we get suddenly a very smooth movement. It's not going to be as accurate, but we can get close. So that's kind of uh, what we do. And the extra awesome part of the network transform component here is that it can utilize that we are using a rigid body 3D. And this means that it will take into account our velocity and movement direction and all that to predict where we are going to be in a second and therefore can make more precise interpolation uh, for our movement. So that's super awesome. So if you have you if you're using a rigid body like I am here, definitely use it here under the transform sync mode. If you're not there, well then you can just sync the transform and that's going to be fine. Uh, but this is definitely very cool. Uh, then we have the movement threshold here, and that is the amount of units, or that's the uh, how much we can move in units before we send uh, updates out that we have moved. So this is how much. This is basically the um, threshold for registering um, that we have moved on the network. And uh, that's going to be fine here. And then we have the snap threshold. And this is basically how many units we need to move before we don't do any interpolation and just snap to that point. So let's say our, we, ha- we would have a telepoint, uh, teleport um, uh, point over here and the end of the portal would be over here. Well, then we would want to be able to go through that and then jump over there with any in, without any interpolation along the way. Well, that is what the snap threshold can be used for. And also, if we should experience a huge lag spike and a loss of connection for a time, well, then if we move all the way over here, we would want it to simply jump once we get the connection again and not suddenly just th- fly through the map. That would look super weird. So that's kind of what that variable is for, and you can just leave it at 5. Then we have the interpolate movement factor. And the smaller you make this, well then, the more we are going to interpolate. The slower we are going to, uh, or the more smooth, I should say, the movement is going to be. And uh, a pretty good value for this is actually 1. That's a good default value, and we're going to leave it at that. Um, But I do want to show you what it looks like if we disable interpolation. And you can do that by setting this to zero. And let's also just disable rotation here, set that to none, and we can look at that in a second. So if we were to now save this and then go under edit, project settings, player, and then we can just uh, disable this annoying resolution dialog each time that we make a build. We can also disable the, the or set the default not to be full screen and uh, then maybe input 800 by 600 here. So we're just going to get a small window that starts automatically. So now let's press Ctrl B or Command B if you're on the Mac here and it's going to build a player for us. And you can see that it starts up there. And inside of Unity I'm simply going to drag my scene over here, split it down the middle so that we have our player here and the scene here and we can view both the build and uh, the scene over here. So now let's hit play and go to host and uh, yep and then we can navigate over to our build here and select client and if we turn around here then uh, looking over here we can start moving around and you can see that it is indeed updating but it's very jerky. So we have this uh, motion jumping which we definitely do not want. But the cool thing is that we can go in and adjust this interpolation factor while the game is running. 
So um, this might not work. Uh, it has worked for me. I don't know if the component is built to do this. So not uh, all of the settings might not work in real time. But I know at least if we find our player here, um, the, the player that we built, so that would be this one, not the one connected to the editor. So that one here associated with the build. And then bump the interpolate factor up to one. And we'll then look at him here and go over here. You can see just how smooth that motion now is. So that is actually a pretty good amount. You can see that it takes him a little while to slow down when we stop, while over here it's instant. But that's kind of the price that you have to pay. So I'm actually very satisfied with that movement. Just for fun, let me show you what this would look like if we changed it to 0.1. That means that the inter interpolation would be very slow and you can see indeed it is. And if we were to bump this up to something like 3. Well then you can see we start introducing some of the jerkiness back into the motion. So I think a, a value of 1 is uh, great there and we can go in here and set that to 1. Uh, then the rotation here, we can select what axis we want to uh, uh, sync over the network and in our case we only want to sync the Y axis because we are going to do the uh, uh, syncing of rotation on the camera as a uh, separate component. So we'll just select Y there. And uh, the interpolate rotation factor, we're going to have to bump that up to 10 actually. Uh, I found when using 1, it was way too slow. I mean way too slow. Uh, so I found that 10 is a good value. And why these two differ so much is um, not something that I can answer you on. I, I'm sorry. I simply don't know. Uh, but I do know that uh, 10 is a pretty good value to set for this. You can of course again build the players and play around with this. So um, we're just going to assume that this is working and then uh, add the rotation syncing for the camera also. So um, you might be thinking, well, let's go ahead and find the camera here and let's add a component and add the network transform. We can see now it introduces a network identity and another network transform. And that's not something that we want to have. Um, Instead, what we want is we want the player to have this central network identity component and have everything be controlled from the root object. So in, therefore, Unity has made this network transform child component that we attach to the root, the player object, and then we drag in the camera and it will control this. So if we select network transform child here, you can see that we have this target variable. And in here we can drag the camera and uh, uh, we have a bunch of settings for this too. And this behaves a little weirdly because when I use the movement threshold, well I said, okay, so I don't want to sync any movement. I just want to sync uh, rotation on the x-axis. So I went in and said, uh, set the movement threshold really high so that it would never send out any movement. That didn't work, however, because movement threshold, I think it's a bug, also has an effect on rotation. It worked on some of the clients, but on the host system, uh, the, uh, the rotation suddenly didn't update. So if you want to be sure that this is working, simply leave the movement threshold as is. Then we have the interpolate movement factor. This we can go ahead and set to zero. And that's, that's fine, because we don't want to spend any processing power uh, on interpolating movement on something that doesn't move. Then we have the interpolate rotation factor. And uh, this somehow behaves differently than the rotation factor up here. And it might be because this syncs using a transform and not a rigid body, which is also something we want because our camera doesn't have a rigid body attached. Um, so that might be uh, why. But for now, let's just leave the, this at 0 0.5 and see what happens. And then we can change it at runtime. The rotation axis, we of course want to set to X only. And we don't need to compress the rotation here. So let's save this and uh, let's build this and see if it works. So there we have the build. We hit play. Select host there. Select client here. 
And you can see now that our rotation looks just fine. However, if we um, kind of get closer here, you can see that the up and down rotation is a bit jerk and jerky still. It's kind of clunky. So uh, in order to change the smoothness on this, we can of course find the object as always, not that one, this one. And uh, we can try and make this smaller. So let's set it to 0 0.2. And uh, just focus on him there. And you can see now the rotation is much smoother. I think, however, now it's a bit, it takes a bit long for it to slow down. Uh, so I think we'll find an intermediate um, value at something like 0 0.3. And you can see there what it looks like. And uh, now we can move around and uh, look around and it will update on the client, um, which also hosts the server and on the remote client here. So that's basically all for syncing movement over in the network. So let's hit stop on that. Let's stop playing there. Let's go into the player and change this to 0.3. And we can collapse that and collapse that. And we are basically done. So that was basically it for performing movement synchronization over the network for our player. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, in the next one, I think that we're going to look into expanding on our character controls. So maybe adding some flying mechanics, the spring physics that I teased you in the first video, and uh, also have setting a lock on uh, how much we can rotate our camera so that we uh, don't suddenly view everything upside down. So that was basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.